In the United States, a huge search and rescue mission to find six missing workers after a major bridge collapsed has now been suspended. Authorities in Baltimore believe there is no hope of finding them alive. The Francis Scott Key Bridge came down after being rammed by a packed container ship when it lost power on Tuesday morning. The federal government has promised money and resources to rebuild the bridge. Its collapse has indefinitely shut down the port of Baltimore, one of the biggest in the United States. A heartbreaking end to a search for survivors. After nearly a day of searching for six missing people who were on the bridge at the time it collapsed, authorities said they no longer had hope of finding anyone alive. Based on the length of time that we've gone in this search, the extensive search efforts that we've put into it, the water temperature, that at this point we do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. And so this evening at about uh, 7.30, we are going to suspend the active search and rescue efforts. This footage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge being hit by a cargo ship shows just how quickly the bridge collapsed. That's raised questions about its structural integrity and reignited fears about the safety of US infrastructure as a whole. Many bridges across the country are considered to be in bad condition. But Maryland Governor Wes Moore emphasised that not many bridges could be expected to weather a hit from a 95,000 tonne cargo ship. You know, this is uh, an unprecedented situation, right, where you have a ship and a, of, of a cargo mass that large moving at that speed. It's difficult to understand what infrastructure could have taken that level of, that level of hit and that level of direct hit. The federal government has promised to cover the full cost of rebuilding the bridge, no matter how expensive. But it has warned it's likely to have a major impact on supply chains, threatening to disrupt supplies from cars to sugar. The port of Baltimore is key to shipping on the US East Coast, and the collapsed bridge will likely create traffic jams for months or even years to come. For more on this, I'm pleased to welcome Ulf Kaspera, director of Germany's Federal Bureau of Maritime Casualty Investigation. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. I'd like to ask good morning. based good morning. I'd like to ask based on your experience how we could see such a big ship suddenly lose power and control. Are there are there no backup systems in place for an incident like this? Um yeah, first of all, these are terrible pictures. This is a terrible accident. Um, I haven't seen pictures like that in my, my whole career. And to answer your questions, yes, of course, there are backup systems. Normally, when you have a blackout on board of a ship, then um, you have a time period of 30 minutes, and then, then the emergency uh, generators should start. And these emergency generators then um, will um, support power again so that you can start the machinery again but this will take around about two or three minutes and um, besides that and during that short period of time you can of course drop the anchor for example to uh, get the ship to a hold. So in this case do you think it is likely then that these emergency generators failed to kick in or, or simply that they didn't have enough time to do so? Um, I, well, it's, it's a bit hard to to um, uh, talk about from from um, um, my point of view. Um, it seems that uh, the um, uh, um, emergency generator worked because the um, the lights went on again, but I had no information if it was uh, possible to start the machinery again, the main the main engine. And um, as far as I know, the um, pilot on board of the ship gave orders to drop anchor, and uh, he immediately gave an emergency call uh, to onshore. So I think he did everything that he could. Okay, let's talk more generally then about what other kinds of safety measures are in place to prevent something like this. I mean, also, uh, when we look at the picture in Europe, you have huge ports like Rotterdam in the Netherlands, uh, Hamburg in Germany. Many are probably looking at what's happened in Baltimore and wondering 
what safety mechanisms are in place to prevent something like that happening here. Uh, what would you tell a viewer um, about what precautions are there to make sure that those ports are safe? Um, firstly, this is um, well, a question to each individual port. They are, um, what, what kind of measures they, they would like to install. This is a decision of the port itself. So um, there are not that many measures that you can, can, can do. Uh, Hamburg, for example, there is the regulation that up to a certain size of the ship, you are obliged to take uh, tugboats for assistance. And um, if you use tugboats, of course, accidents like this may, uh, uh, can, can, uh, may not be happen. But beside of tech boats, it's um, quite difficult because um, it's well the, the environment is there and the conditions are there, so it's um, well, well nothing more that you can that you can do about that. Yeah, we heard the Maryland governor in in this case at great pains to emphasize that uh, no bridge would be able to withstand a a, um, a collision like this. That it wasn't specific to the key bridge. Is that also your opinion? Um, maybe, I, I, I do not know, because um, I've never seen such an accident before, and um, I, um, I, I cannot tell if um, other bridges would survive uh, an impact like, like, like that. I think it depends on the, on, on the bridge. It depends, of course, on the, on the accident itself. So it means the speed of the ship, the size of the ship. Of the ship. So I think it's just um, a question of the accident itself. Maybe or maybe not. Now, looking, uh, just, just one last question before I let you go. Looking at what comes next, uh, how will investigators go about looking into what happened in this incident? What process is in place when you see an accident like this? Well, normally the process uh, uh, in, in that we have is um, that you collect all data available. So that means uh, each ship is... Uh, equipped with a VDR, voyage data recorder. And this voyage data recorder uh, captured all data from the machinery, from, from the bridge, communication data. So you grab these data and you analyze that. And then, of course, you will, you will um, go immediately on board, talk to the people, get witness statements, so that you can have a, a whole bunch of information that you are going to analyze. And then um, well, we're trying to find um, uh, the root cause, of course, and then try to find measures how to prevent accidents like that. Well, thank you so much Excellent for taking the time. is not dealing with liability. Uh -huh. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. We really appreciate your time. Uh, that is Ulf Kaspera, the director of Germany's Federal Bureau of Maritime Casualty Investigation. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, let's cross over to Washington, where DW reporter Stefan Simons is following the story for us. Stefan, have there been any developments in the investigation? Other than what we just reported, what we have seen in the report and heard in the report and what you said before that, no. Now, what happens today is, as you said, divers go back into the water. And when I say go into the water, remember, this water is uh, very cold. There is a current. Uh, and, uh, of course, under the water, what you have now is this uh, or reminiscent of those the, the bridge. It's like a jigsaw puzzle chaos under water in pitch black darkness so that's uh, a challenge however on the other hand the ntsb the national transportation safety board agents will uh, try very likely to get on board of this ship on the dolly today to get the what is known in airplanes the um, uh, flight recorder uh, ships have that too and they want to analyze this data uh, as you mentioned, six people assumed dead. Now this is a recovery mission. Uh, two of those people, one uh, person identified as a father of three from El Salvador, one a father from Honduras, and two from Guatemala, all of them living and working in the United States for decades. Now this is, of course, a human a tragedy, uh, but there are also economic uh, implications. We had the Port of Baltimore is blocked for an unforeseeable uh, uh, time. What does that mean economically? Well, for the region, for the uh, Baltimore and the wider region in Maryland, uh, it means uh, trouble. Why? First of all, you have a traffic tr delivery trouble. So how to get through Baltimore 
to Baltimore, out of Baltimore, then you have goods uh, who are just not showing up anymore. Let's, for example, say 850,000 cars per year delivered into the Baltimore port. You're right, Baltimore, not the biggest port. There's other ports on the East Coast, of course, New York, New Jersey, Norfolk, Virginia, etc. They can pick up the slack, so to speak. They, people can send uh, their goods there, right? But that increases costs. And then you have automatically with this supply chain issues and Americans hate the word supply chain trouble or supply chain issue because they suffered from it uh, for the last three years and paid higher prices for from peanut butter to autos, cars, vehicles, etc., etc. So that will have an impact predominantly locally, but still a lot of Americans will feel that. Now, the president was quick to say the government will foot the bill of rebuilding the bridge. Uh, will there be any political fallout, you think? That is about to see, because as you probably referring to, the owner of the purse is Congress, that is the Senate and the House of Representatives. The lawmakers will decide how much money a president gets to spend, the executive gets to spend. So President Biden will have to work with uh, Congress, with the Republican majority, slim Republican majority in the House of Congress and with the Senate to secure the funding to rebuild this bridge. And this is not going to be cheap. DW. Reporter Stefan Simons there. Thank you very much, Stefan.